For well over a decade, fingerprint authentication systems have been included in many consumer and business class portable computers. However, it seems that each and every one of these sensors has been successfully overcome with simple spoof fingerprints as soon as it caught the attention of interested tinkerers or other hackers. Only recently have such sensors been included in smartphones, for example in this 2011 model smartphone in which the fingerprint sensor authenticates the user not only to unlock the device itself but also to authorize payments through the phone's NFC enabled mobile wallet. Now a little late to the game, this weekend Apple introduced its own fingerprint based authentication system. Apple's bold claims about Touch ID's very high level of security and how your fingerprint is one of the best passwords in the world rang out as a challenge to the hacker community, which inspired a successful hack within just a day of Touch ID's release. Here, Dexter and I recreate and try to improve upon Starbucks' now famous hack by basing our wood glue spoof on nothing more than a photo taken with an iPhone 4S of a latent fingerprint on an iPhone 5S. We photographed the fingerprint inside a 3 by 3 centimeter paper frame so that it could be scaled and skewed to the proper proportions before printing it. The fingerprint is mirrored so that the printout can be laid toner side down on the photosensitive copper PCB. It is made black and white using gradation curves and threshold, and areas of the print are retouched as required. Since our latent print is naturally somewhat white, there is no need to invert the image. It is printed on translucent paper using black toner, which blocks the UV light from a photosensitive PCB. After being exposed in our repurposed face tanning bed, the copper PCB can be developed. After just a few moments, the developed fingerprint begins to appear. After being developed and rinsed with water, the fingerprint is ready to be etched. To avoid etching too much copper, exposed areas of the PCB are marked in black before the PCB is put in the etching bath. After etching, the fingerprint ridges have been etched away and the copper mold is complete. The copper mold is sprayed with graphite spray to lubricate it as well as to provide favorable capacitive properties of our wood glue fingerprint spoof. After the wood glue spoof has been allowed to dry, it's peeled from the mold using a hard edge, for example another PCB, and your fingernails. After the spoof finger is ready, the victim can be attacked. Here the victim is enrolling his finger in the phone. He needs to move it around a little bit more before the phone likes it. And when he's done with the first enrollment process, the phone asks him to enroll the edges of his fingers as well. He proceeds to do so, giving the phone as much information as it requires to make for a secure and convenient fingerprint. Finger one is enrolled in the phone. First time it needs to be opened with a passcode. Home screen. Now it can be unlocked using the enrolled finger. Okay. Okay. What's the button? The attacker passes the camera to the victim, takes his spoof, and holds it to the fingerprint sensor. First time works like a charm. Let's try it again. Second time, works as well. Maybe anything works. Pointer finger, doesn't work. Spoof, 
works again.